So you want to buy a Hobie kayak. Well, you came to the right place. In this video, we're going to talk about my old kayak. This is the Hobie Passport 12. And we're going to talk about my new kayak. This is the Hobie Compass 12. We're going to talk about the differences. We're going to talk about why I switched. So stay with us, guys. Hey, now. Take a step outside and seize the day. All right, welcome to the channel, everybody. Dave from Timber Time Outdoors, and as I mentioned, we're gonna talk kayaks in this video. So we're gonna jump right into two things. Um, we're gonna cover the differences, the noticeable differences. I know you could, uh, you know, you could talk for a really long time about every little detail, but I'm gonna cover kind of the big stuff that I observed by using both of these kayaks, and then we're gonna talk about why I switched. So let's get going. The obvious one is price, right? That's kind of why you're here. Um, you don't wanna spend $5,000 on a kayak, so you're kind of looking at that, you know, $1,600 mark up to maybe $2,600 mark, and that's where these two fall. And, you know, Easy math here, these things are about $1,000 difference in price. It depends on which one you buy, because I think uh, this one here comes in a couple different models. I ended up buying the camo version, which is slightly more money, and I'll talk about why that is. Um, this one also comes in some different colors and some different uh, ways that they mold it. Bottom line is, it's about $1,000 difference between the two, give or take a couple hundred bucks. And the main reason for that is the Mirage Drive. Okay, so the pedal drives are different. They look the same uh, up front, except for one feature. This one has reverse. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk about why you may want reverse and why you might not care about it. Um, I've used both. And I can kind of tell you the situations where the reverse is nice. And I can tell you the situations where the reverse really isn't needed. So if you want to save that $1,000, depending on your application, hang around to the end of this video. Okay, so I want to talk just briefly about this particular compass. This is the camo version. Um, aside from the cool color, there is a feature on here that I want to talk about, which makes this one a little bit unique. This Mirage Drive comes with the turbo fins. And um, so, you know, one of the things I'm gonna get into about pros and cons at the end of this thing is this kayak is pretty fast. And there's a couple reasons for that. And one of them is the turbo fins. So not only do you get the reverse, on this particular model on the camel version, you get a slightly longer paddle, which was what they call the turbo fin. Uh, and so if you wanna go faster, get the turbo fins. Now, um, the salesman did say it's a little bit harder to pedal it, right? So you got more resistance and so forth, but um, that's really the big difference in that camo version of Compass. I think it comes in three colors. The camo's more. It's not only the cool color, it is the turbo fin that it jacks up that price, I think a couple, maybe a couple hundred bucks. So, so note that. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is the hull design. The hull design between these two is is a pretty big difference. And um, I'll overlay some video that kind of shows that. Um, the front end of this boat is a lot different because of the way that they want to go through the water. This one's got kind of a kind of a bulbous nose, and this one's got more of a knifed type of nose. And I can tell you this one, if you're in a really wavy condition, um, you don't get wet or anything, but you get some bow slap. So if you're trying to be quiet, um, you know, in a choppy condition, being quiet isn't all that important, but you know, you tend to get some bow slap on this one. Um, this one goes through the water. Whew. I mean, it really tracks nice. They're both great boats, um, but I do like the way this one tracks and it's quick. Um, from a stability standpoint, this boat is slightly wider. Um, so I think, you know, if we, if we look at the inside gunnels, it's about 26 inches versus this one is only 22 inches. So that translates to a couple things. One is kind of usable space on the inside. It's very noticeable how much more room you have in here. You'll see that this one comes with foot pads. Um, and the reason for that is, you know, they think it's okay for you to stand up in this one because it is more stable. This one doesn't come with those foot pads. You can add them, um, but I, I can tell you you know, if you stand up in these two boats, you notice a difference. This one's more stable. Now, 
any kayak's gonna tip over if you lean over too far, and I've done that, and this one almost lost my sunglasses. So just be aware, it's a kayak, okay? But there is a noticeable difference in stability between these two. This one's faster, this one's a little bit more stable. So if you don't like that tippy feeling, you might wanna go with this one here. All right, the next biggest difference between these two boats is the rudder. Um, it's pretty significant between the two. Not in how it performs, but in how it deploys. And some of the, you know, when you're trying to move the boats around, um, one gets in the way a little more than the other. So um, on, the, on the passport here, it's a flip down design, it basically rides up on top of the boat and you have to manually deploy it. Either you have to go back there and flip it down before you take off, or you can, you can sometimes reach back with paddle, and flip it over. That's not always easy to do. And I've, I've forgotten about it several times so you get out there and you got no steering. Um, it's a very capable rudder. It's just a little bit of a pain in the neck um, to flip down. Where this one here, you've got a, you've got a little rip cord that helps you, um, you know, bring the rudder up and deploy it. That's nice if you're in the kayak and you, you know, get into some shallow water or you leave the dock and forget about it. You don't have to, you know, get your paddle back there. So um, it might not sound like a big deal. It is kind of a big deal. Um, and, and the other thing is when you're trying to move these boats around. So if you're trying to load it up on your car, this rudder flips up on the back and you can tip the kayak up on its rear end and it doesn't hurt the rudder. This one here, that rudder's down underneath the boat and it's in the way when you're trying to load it. So you've got to buy an accessory that kind of protects that thing. I'm actually trying to get that. It's uh, back ordered right now, but um, it's this little plastic piece that, um, you know, attaches, I think you strap it on and then it protects that rudder. So um, I do like this one. I have to tell you, even though you've got to have that extra little, little piece. Now I haven't used it yet because I don't have it, but um, I like that the fact that you can just deploy it because I've, like I said, I've left the dock a couple times, forgotten about it. You're trying to flip it around and it's just a pain. So, so noticeable difference in the rudder. Okay, real quick difference. Um, you know, there's a pedal kayak, so having your paddle be different between the two, you're probably like, who cares? Um, I'm kind of that way too, who cares? But I did want to point it out because it is pretty significant. If you're someone that wants to paddle this kayak rather than pedal it, um, the Passport's paddle's pretty cheap. It's just a simple aluminum paddle. By the way, both come with a paddle. And this one here is a fiberglass paddle. So it's a little bit lighter, a little bit nicer, a little stiffer. Um, so I don't know, paddles, I never use my paddle. So it's there in case of an emergency. So I don't care about that, but I wanted to point that out to you. All right, the next difference between these two is the seats. And if you look at them, at face value, all you can tell is, well, maybe they're different color because they, they do look very similar. They're made out of the same material. Um, obviously this one's all black and this one's got some gray trim on it, but there are some subtle differences. One is, one is comfort. This one is slightly more comfortable and the reason that it's more comfortable, for me anyway, is that you sit up just slightly higher. This one has some feet that kick down or it's, you know, it's got this little bar that kicks down and it just keeps you up a little higher. It's just, just a little bit easier on your knees. Not a huge deal, but it's definitely something I wanted to point out. Um, that, that's kind of a double-edged sword because this one doesn't have that, so you can get things under the seat. So if you want to store tackle blocks, it's a lot easier to do it on this one. Um, on this one, that bar gets in the way. Pretty much can't store anything under there unless you do some modifications. And then the last thing I would point out is the way that the seat attaches um this one's pretty loose and you know there's really nothing to hold there's a little i don't know it's like a little tab on the back here that holds it in place and then it's got the two straps that click down um that's all that holds it on so you know it's not going to go out of there but it's, it's just kind of it's not as nice as this one this one snaps in place it's more firm um, and so I do like the seat on this one better. I know some of the older compasses had a really nice seat and they changed it out. Although some would argue that that seat was worse. I won't get into that. You've probably seen those videos. Um, but the seats are different, even though they look the same. A um, little bit of an ergonomic difference and then the way they attach. Okay, the last thing I'll cover, and I'm just gonna kind of bucket it together. And I'll just call it the mold design. Now, again, these two kayaks are different um, processes. You know, this is the blow mold. 
this is some sort of a, I don't know, I'm not even sure what you call it, PVC that, you know, maybe uh, vacuum formed and it's, it's a two-piece design. You can get this one in a blow mold too. Um, that's really not what I wanted to point out here. It's, it's some of the, the features and cavities and contours of it. You know, I mentioned the bow, faster, um, more stable, that kind of thing. But in terms of storage on the top, there is some differences. One thing that's nice about this boat is that it allows for two um, eight inch round hatches. One in the front, it, it comes with one in the middle, which most people change that out to the square one and they put the round one in the front, but you can also put a second one in the back, a second round hatch. On this boat, you can do the round hatch here in the front, but in the back, there's no, um, you know, kind of pre molded in area to do an eight inch hatch. I'm actually gonna put a six inch hatch back there, kind of worthless. It's, you know, I might just have my uh, safety kit or something in there, I'm not sure, but I wanted some access. That's, that's the biggest thing is if you're gonna add accessories, which you will, um, in my next video, I'm talking about accessories like crazy. Um, I needed access to get fasteners and, and so forth. So I do like this boat better because um, you can get that eight inch hatch. Um, and other things that, you know, are different between the two, this one just comes with bungees up front. This has a nice netting system, not a huge deal. I think a lot of people would take this off anyway, and I may take it off. I'm not sure what, how I'm gonna rig this up in front. I think I'm gonna have a cooler here, but um, that's different. Um, the back is basically the same. We've got bungees there. I mentioned the foot pads because this one is wider. Um, the carry handles are a big difference. So this one here, it just has like a, you know, mounted, regular handle it's kind of similar to the carry handles that are on the front this one here depending on how you lift it up is a little awkward to carry so the the handle is actually molded in underneath the seat it's good and bad in my opinion it just depends on how you're trying to carry the thing i'm also going to add some rails to help me carry it um, but note that that um, carrying these two is different and the weight is different. And so um, this one here is, the, is lighter. It's about 10 pounds lighter. Do you notice that? It kind of depends again on how you're trying to hold on to it. If you're just picking it up like this, you can't. If you're trying to get it over your head or, then it's slightly noticeable. So this one's about, I believe it's 68 pounds and this one is 78 pounds, not rigged up, you know, just out of the box without the seat and the drive in it. That's what it weighs. So again, very light kayaks. Um, you know, that's another thing I like about these two kayaks is they're still easy to lift. One person can lift them. It's not like the the bigger Hobies where you gotta have a trailer and that kind of thing. So um, just note there's some storage differences. The weight is slightly different in the way they're made, um, but they're very, very similar. Okay, so why did I switch? It comes down to one feature and it's basically that thousand dollar Mirage drive difference. This one has reverse, this one doesn't. Here's where reverse really helps you when you're fishing. Depends on the kind of fishing, but the way I do, the way I fish is I'm kind of moving around, I'm casting, I'm trying to follow some contours. And when you get into a big fish, that fish is gonna tow you around a little bit and you have no way to resist against that fish because you don't have reverse. And so I've actually had some fish tow me into some logs and I ended up losing the fish. Um, so for me, I wanted the reverse. Now, one thing you can do with this, if you're just tooling around and you want to back up, you can pop this drive out, flip it around and pedal and you can get yourself out. You're not going to do that when you're fishing because you need, you know, it takes some time to do it. But just be aware, you can kind of put this in reverse. But that's the main reason that I switched. Um, and then lastly, I just want to talk about pros and cons to each because there are pros and cons. Obviously the price here, right? This one's cheaper, um, save about $1,000. Um, it's slightly more stable. It's a little heavier, but not a big deal. And then it depends on how you fish. Now this is a very fishable boat. If you're gonna anchor or you're uh, maybe in Florida and you're you know, going across some great big flats um, where you don't need reverse, doesn't matter if a fish tows you around or you're just drifting, this is probably the boat to go with. Um, especially on great big water, it's slightly more stable. If you're, if you're trying to fish like I do, where you're you know, following a, a contoured edge, maybe you're drifting, you're around some docks, 
um, the reverse is, is great. I, I really do like the reverse feature on this one. And if you follow the Ka uh, Hobie kayaks, you'll notice that they're high-end ones. They have a 360 drive and they're just crazy for maneuverability. So, you know, if boat control is super important to you, this is the boat to get. The other thing I love about this boat is the flip down rudder. Now, and again, that's very subjective. I happen to like it. Um, so we'll wrap this video up guys. Um, thanks for watching. Um, pros and cons to both. Hopefully this helped you uh, make a decision between the two. If you've used both of these boats or one or the other, um, I, I would love it if you'd make a comment because people that watch this video, they read the comments and they can learn from those too. So if you have some expertise that I did not cover in this video, put those in the comments, it really helps. All right, like, subscribe, send it to your friends and remember everybody, keep it in the timber, bye-bye.